Our bodies need real food to function. The purpose of food is to nourish our bodies in order to sustain growth, repair and vital processes, and to furnish energy. But now we are in a state where we eat more chemicals than we eat nutritious food and it is making us sick. Chronic diseases now make up seven of the world's top 10 causes of death. Nearly 60% of adult Americans have at least one chronic condition such as diabetes, cancer, or cardiovascular disease. About 40% of American adults have multiple chronic conditions. 70% of deaths are caused by chronic disease and these rates will continue to grow if the primary cause is not effectively addressed. And that primary cause is our modern food system. Many of you are struggling with your health and weight loss issues because you are putting your trust in the system that created the problem. And it is hard to break out of the system if you're not aware how it exists. And once you understand how the system works and how it's keeping you sick, you can begin to break out of this toxic system so that you can finally regain your health. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Heal Deal Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Leona Allen, and in today's episode, I will discuss America's food system and how it contributes to the majority of the chronic diseases we see today. A food system is a complex network of activities and infrastructure involving the production, processing, distribution, and consumption of food and food-related items. Production involves knowledge of how to raise crops and livestock. It also includes knowledge of the sun, soil, water, air, seeds, access to land, tools, and farm equipment. Processing involves harvesting, packaging, storage, and processing facilities. In distribution, the food is ready for sale, and it also includes marketing efforts. And consumption is how we prepare and consume the food. There's two types of food systems, sustainable and conventional. Sustainable food systems is a holistic approach which relies solely on natural processes to ensure plant health and crop performance. It's a system that sustains the health of the soils, ecosystems, and people. Sustainable farming foregoes the use of synthetic pesticides, herbicides, and fertilizers to produce food. And instead, farmers will plant a variety of plants together to promote biodiversity and ward off pests and pathogens. The goal of conventional food systems is to produce the highest yield of crops. This is achieved through the application of synthetic chemicals, genetically modified organisms, and a number of other industrial products. This system alters the natural environment, deteriorates soil quality, and eliminates biodiversity and destroys our health. The number one priority of food systems should be to produce, process, distribute, and consume foods with health and nutrition in mind. Ideally, for the best nutritional consumption, food should come directly from a sustainable farmer to your kitchen. But unfortunately, most of our food in our big chain grocery stores come from the conventional system. The vast array of foods we see in the grocery stores has passed many hands before it ends up on our plate. They have been sprayed, dyed, and fried, put on ships, trucks, planes, and trains, stored in rat-infested warehouses before they end up in our local grocery stores. By the time that food ends up in your kitchen, you don't know how old it is, where it comes from, or what's in it. And in most cases, it's not even worth eating. Our modern food system is saturated with processed foods and today's consumption is more about taste and convenience and less about nutrition. The U.S. Department of Agriculture, also known as the USDA, 
defines a processed food as one that has undergone any changes to its natural state. That is, any raw agricultural commodity subjected to washing, cleaning, milling, cutting, chopping, heating, pasteurizing, blanching, cooking, canning, freezing, drying, dehydrating, mixing, packaging, or other procedures that alter the food from its natural state. The food may include the addition of other ingredients, such as preservatives, flavors, nutrients, and other food additives or substances approved for use in food products, such as salt, sugars, and fats. According to these standards, virtually all foods sold in the supermarket would be classified as processed to some degree. Dairy products like eggs, milk, and cheese, as well as frozen vegetables are considered processed foods, just not to the degree of your usual suspects, such as Oreos and Twinkies. Now there is a system to classify processed foods, and this is called the Nova classification system. And it lists four categories detailing the degree to which food is processed. Category one, is unprocessed or minimally processed. In this category, food is unaltered or slightly altered for the main purpose of preservation, which does not substantially change the nutritional content of the food. Examples include cleaning and removing inedible or unwanted parts, grinding, refrigeration, pasteurization, fermentation, freezing, and vacuum packaging. No substances are added. Processing allows the food to be stored for a greater amount of time and remain safe to eat. Many fresh fruits, vegetables, whole grains, nuts, and meats fall into this category. Category two is processed culinary ingredients. These are the foods derived from category one that have been changed in some way by pressing, grinding, or milling. And they are typically not eaten on their own but they're used to prepare minimally processed foods. Examples include butter, sugar, molasses, and honey. Category three is processed foods. These are foods from either of the two previous categories that have been made by preservation methods, such as non-alcoholic fermentation, canning, or bottling. So these are your canned fruits and vegetables, some cheeses, Freshly made bread and canned fish are examples. These foods are typically readily eaten without further preparation. And then the fourth and final category is ultra processed. So these foods are the packaged foods that have been made by food companies using many manufactured ingredients rather than actual foods. Those ingredients are combined in some way to make something that is edible, but in no way maintains the integrity or the nutritional content of the original foods. So they go beyond the incorporation of salt, sweeteners, or fat to include those artificial flavors, colors, emulsifiers, thickeners, and preservatives in order to preserve the desirable sensory qualities of the food, such as flavor, texture, aroma, and appearance. Packaged snacks, cookies, instant soups, candy, and soft drinks are examples of ultra processed foods. Ultra processed foods are designed and manufactured for maximum profit. They have long shelf lives. They are convenient and ready to eat. They are usually less expensive than other foods and they are also highly branded and marketed to consumers. Ultra processed foods have rapidly replaced unprocessed or minimally processed foods, freshly prepared meals and home cooking. The revolution in food science and modern grocery retailing over the last 60 years has led to this explosive growth in manufacturing and consumption of these ultra processed foods. These foods now make up more than 70% of the packaged foods in the United States and represents about 60% of the calories consumed by the average American.
Various research studies have found strong associations between high ultra-processed food intake and chronic disease. It's because these foods lack nutrients. All of the important nutrients, such as fiber, vitamins, and minerals, were destroyed or removed during processing. And if nutrients are listed, they were added back in. But trust me, these nutrients are not equivalent to nutrients found in whole natural food. Ultra processed foods are typically high in calories, sugars, refined starches, unhealthy fats, and sodium. They are also loaded with harmful chemicals. Ultra processed foods don't satisfy hunger and therefore create an addictive nature that makes them easy to overeat. These major factors links the regular consumption of ultra processed foods to increased health risks including weight gain, obesity, type 2 diabetes, heart disease, gastrointestinal issues, cancer, and a shortened lifespan. Ultra-processed food consumption has also been associated with mental disorders such as depression, anxiety, and dementia. So if ultra-processed foods are so bad for us, then why do they allow these products on our grocery shelves? It's because it's big business. It's because the processed food system is monopolized by giant food corporations such as Kellogg's, Coca-Cola, and Nestle. And they all compete with one another. And do you think they're competing to see who can get our country the healthiest? No, they're competing for your dollar. America's food system is about profit and they will do whatever it takes to make that dollar, even if it kills you. The processed food industry is not interested in your health, and they will do whatever they can to get you addicted and begging for more. These corporations spend millions of dollars on food scientists and researchers who engineer and design food products that are addictive. They actually study how your brain reacts to food and use metrics such as bliss point and mouthfeel. The bliss point is a formulation of fat, salt, and sugar that the body is programmed to seek out and like. And they combine it in such a way to make the food highly palatable and our taste buds link to the brain's pleasure zone and sends us signals such as, mmm, that's so good, I need more of that. And then there's mouthfeel, which technically refers to the chemical and physical interactions between food and the oral cavity. And it involves taste, texture, chewing, the whole experience, the color, the aroma. They even have it down to a science where they even focus on the sound. Now the combination of bliss point and mouthfeel lights up all these pleasure centers in your brain. That combination of the aroma, the crunch, and then they have that along with that right combination of sugar, salt, and fat. And all that was engineered to get you hooked wanting and craving for more and all that has nothing to do with your health but it's to get you addicted to their product which will make you buy more of their product and putting more money in their pockets these food companies put so much energy in shaping how we think about food with their marketing tactics it's the marketing that tells us what to eat and when to eat it. It's the marketing that tells us if you want satisfaction to get this candy bar. It's this marketing that says this is what you buy when you're celebrating your birthdays or holidays. They know what they're doing. They use colors. They use music. They use symbolisms. All this is used to hook us. And the people that are suffering the most are our children because they know that if they start young, they will have a customer for life. And they're also creating a generation of people that are depending on these foods and the fast food lifestyle. 
So do you see how we're living in a system that doesn't support you or your children's health? Understand that you can't fix a problem in the same system that created it. So if you want to get healthy, you need to understand this. If you want to add healthy years to your life, you have to break out of this system mindset and don't sit around and wait for them to change either. They are making way too much money off of this system. All right, you get it. The purpose of this episode is to expose what is really happening and why you may be struggling with your health and your habits and why you can't seem to let go of that bag of chips or the Cheez-Its or the Skittles and all these things that you're having a hard time letting go of. A lot of it has to do with how those foods are created. They were designed to get you hooked. Now we gotta get you unhooked. And it's not easy to break free from these food attachments that we have developed over many, many years but it is possible. So in order to heal, we have to be able to break these addictions or these attachments first. And you got to be willing to educate yourself and your family and begin to invest your money where it counts. You may have to begin to support your local farmers, be able to go to those farmers markets. You may have to begin to cook more. We got to teach our children how to cook. We have to learn about nutrition because proper nutrition isn't really taught to us anymore. We have been relying on the modern food system to teach us about nutrition and we're getting our education from marketing and TV. So we're not getting the right knowledge. What we're going through isn't good for future generations. So it's up to us to teach our children about real food and how to properly prepare cook and even grow our foods because like I said before the marketing is highly targeted to children next time you watch tv look at these commercials they got the cartoon and the animated stuff and the songs that you never forget they put a lot of energy in getting your children to become customers so this is what we have stacked against us Eliminating all the ultra processed or convenient food can be challenging, but it's important that you do so. With our fast paced lives, it's totally understandable that some of these items are hard to give up because of their convenience. It's nice to come home and just pop something in the microwave and eat. To put that pizza in the oven and just eat. We don't wanna prepare our foods. It's time consuming to shop for the foods, prepare the foods, I get it. But you gotta put your health before convenience. So in order to start changing your life around and allow yourself to become less dependent on this system, you first have to learn to identify these ultra processed foods and learn to find healthy alternatives. And to help you out, I do have a course that'll help you get off these processed foods. You will understand more on how to read labels, the ingredients to avoid, and how to make better choices. And the reason why I created this course is because it takes time to learn this. These ultra processed foods are everywhere and in everything from our dressings, our ketchups, our soups. I mean, it's in everything, even things marketed as healthy foods. So we got to educate ourselves. It does take a lot of work and patience, but it is worth it. But you have to put in the work. You can't rely on the system to do it for you. They just want to make money. I can easily go deeper into more topics surrounding this issue, and I will in future episodes. But what I want to ask you to do is tell me what you think and some of the questions you have, because I wanted to go in the direction that will help in your journey and answer your questions. But in the meantime, check out the show notes for the links to the course I have about processed foods. And I have other resources that will be helpful, such as the healthy food shopping guide. And I also have a link to the breakthrough call. If you would like to have a conversation with me, just to chat for about 45 minutes and determine where you will need the most support. 
All right, so here are a few takeaways before I close. The food system is a complex network of activities and infrastructure involving the production, processing, distribution, and consumption of food and food-related items. Processing changes a food from its natural state. There are four categories detailing the degree to which food is processed. Category one is unprocessed or minimally processed. Category two is processed culinary ingredients. Category three is processed foods. Category four is ultra processed foods. Ultra processed foods are designed and manufactured for maximum profit, not health. There are strong associations between high ultra processed food intake and chronic disease. And just remember, you can get unhooked, but it will take education, patience, and a strong desire to change. That's it for today. And I will be back next week with another episode. And until next time, go out there and achieve more freedom in your health and your life. Take care. <music>